All right, guys, time for the next tutorial in our Adobe Flash exercises. We're going to start a new file. We'll do File New or Command N on your keyboard, just like we did in Adobe Flash. We're going to again do an Action Script 3.0 and we're going to say OK. And for this one, we again have a tutorial ready to go for us that I have put on the class website. We're going to be completing the motion path tutorial. This tutorial allows us to take an object and make it follow a path that we decide so it looks like it's flying over our stage. So once again I have my stage, I have my timeline, I have my tools and my properties. I'm going to start on layer one and I'm going to name layer one ball. Very creative. And I'm going to come over to my shape tool and I'm going to choose my oval tool. And I'm going to again hold down my shift key like I always do to keep my shape in proportion when I'm drawing it. Again, you can decide what color you want to create your shape with, but make sure that you change it before you draw or you're going to have to come in and then select it and then change the shape. Um, it's just easier to select the color first, but not a big deal. All right, so we've got our circle here. And before we can start, right now all of my shape is broken up into these little dots and I need to convert this into what's called a symbol. A symbol is what we use um, in Flash to create animations more easily. So we're going to right click and I'm going to say convert to symbol. And I'm going to name my symbol again ball so it matches my timeline layer and I'm going to say OK. And this is going to then change into a solid circle and now it's got a box around it and underneath my library over here you're gonna see that I now have my symbol called the ball. The nice thing about the symbol library is you can pull the image out multiple times without having to redraw it and then you can delete them just as easily by clicking on them and pressing your backspace. So I have my symbol that I'm going to use and what I'd like to do is make my ball follow a predetermined path. All right, so what I'm going to do is on my ball layer, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say add a classic motion guide. Basically, this is going to add a secondary layer that I can add the path that I want the ball to follow. I'm going to take my pencil tool on my toolbar and on the path layer, the guide layer, I need to make sure I'm on the right layer when I do this. I'm going to draw a path for my ball to follow. And I'm going to make it kind of complicated, but not so complicated the computer cannot follow my path. When I release, it's going to clean up my path and simplify the line. It doesn't matter what color the line is. It doesn't matter how thick the stroke is, because we're going to hide this all later. So I'm going to come down to frame 50, and if I, when I click on frame 50, right now there's nothing there. So what I need to do is add a keyframe. So remember there's two ways to do that. One is to right click on frame 50, or I'm going to hit F6 on my keyboard in order to add a keyframe. So by doing this and adding my keyframe, excuse me, insert keyframe, it's now going to make the path go from frame 1 to frame 50. Until now, the path did not exist on frame 50. But if you notice, my ball does not exist on frame 50 yet either. So I'm going to come down on the ball layer and on my frame 50, I'm going to right click or hit F5 on, F6 on my keyboard to insert a keyframe, making my ball exist from frame 1 to frame 50. I'm going to go back to frame 1 and I'm going to grab my ball with my arrow tool. And if you notice, a little black dot appears in the center. I need to line that black dot up with the start of the path that I created. I'm going to come down to frame 50 and I have to do the same thing, only this time I want to line my black dot up with the end of the path I created. When you go to do this, you're going to notice the computer pulls the black center to the tip of your path. It's going to help you with that and it's going to help guide you automatically. I'm going to select all of my ball layer and this time I'm going to right click and I'm going to say create a classic tween. 
If you notice, it's going to change it to purple this time, but it's still showing me that I've got a tween or an animation existing. I'm going to hide my path by hitting the arrow, the I, the X out with the I, kind of like we did in Photoshop. And this time when I hit enter, my ball is going to follow that invisible path that I've created by creating a motion path. So that's a little boring for me. I want to change it up. I want to make it so that it, it changes a little bit. So I'm going to come back to frame one and I'm going to click on this and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say free transform. And I'm going to change the size of my ball that I started with. Again, hold that shift key down in order to change it in proportion. And I'm just going to shrink my ball down. I'm going to come down to frame 50 and I'm going to increase the size of my ball. I want it to get really big by the time it's done. I also want to change a couple other things. So I'm going to come under the color effect, under style, and I'm going to change a few other things. I'm going to start by changing the tint of it. I want my ball to become a different color by the time we're done. I'm going to have it go navy, okay? Dark navy. And then I also want to change what's called the alpha. The alpha is like opacity and what the alpha does is just lets me make it go see-through by the time it's done. So this time when I hit enter my ball is going to increase and become see-through. So it's just something a little bit more interesting than just making a ball move along a path. What I'd like you to do is go ahead and do this tutorial as I've talked about it. You can reference the written tutorial I provided you with on the website. You need to not only make the ball follow the path, but I'd like you to also change the ball so it gets bigger or smaller and also changes color or opacity alpha by the time it's done. Remember, we save files last name, first name. Make sure you save both your shape tween and your motion path. Let me know when you're done so I can give you credit for it. Thanks.